So, having looked at Irish tanks I'd like to see added to War Thunder, today we'll be looking at the various Irish armoured cars I'd like to see added to War Thunder. With these ranging from relatively simple designs from the interwar period all the way to the cutting edge vehicles of the Cold War and modern era. So Ireland had first started using armoured cars pretty much all the way back to its inception, or at least the Irish Civil War, and this started with the Rolls Royce armoured car. But unfortunately these early designs were armed solely with machine guns which makes them rather unsuitable to be added to War Thunder. So we will actually be starting with the Leyland Armoured Car, also referred to as the Armoured Vehicle ALV-1 or Leyland ALV-1, which came about during the 1930s as Ireland looked at replacing some of its earlier armoured cars like the Peerless. Unfortunately the budget for this work was limited, which meant having to reuse the armour plate and twin turrets from the now obsolete Peerless Armoured Car in order to keep the costs down. The old turrets and armour were fitted to a Leyland Terrier TE2 lorry chassis, which despite being a civilian design had been produced to specifications laid out by the British War Office, meaning it was designed to be used in areas with poor roads and limited access to maintenance facilities, which gave it an advantage over other civilian designs. The first vehicle was finished in September 1934, but due to issues with the twin turrets from the Peerless, it was decided to try and acquire an alternative turret, which led to the purchase and fitting of four turrets from the Landsverk L60 light tank, which was a Swedish light tank of which two were already in service in Ireland. This gave the Leyland a much better armament compared to the previous twin turret configuration which had only had machine guns, while the new L60 turrets allowed the installation of a 20mm Madsen cannon which had a penetration of 32mm at 500m, which is a pretty decent performance for a 1930s armoured car. Plus it still had the coaxial machine gun so it didn't really lose anything here. So this was just an overall gain for the vehicle. The turret also had the advantage of slightly improving the overall protection of the vehicle, as the turret had a maximum armour thickness of 15mm for the mantlet and 13mm for the rest of the turret which compares to only 8mm for the whole of the vehicle itself, which isn't really even able to stop heavy or even potentially light calibre machine guns, and does make the four-man crew somewhat vulnerable to hull penetrations. The Leyland would go on to serve all throughout the war and would be upgraded in the 1950s, which included the replacement of its coaxial Madsen machine gun with a Browning machine gun plus another one being fitted in the hull as well as remodelling of the frontal hull to be more like the Swedish Landsverk L180, which was also in Irish service. But more importantly, it was fitted with a Ford V8 engine, which gave the vehicle a top speed of 45 miles per hour or 72 kilometers an hour. In this form, the Leylands would survive in service until the 1980s, rendering nearly 50 years of service. When added to War Thunder, I think both the original and refit models could be added at Tier 1, Battle Rating 1.0 or possibly even 1.3, and due to their fast speed and decent armament, I think they could be a really useful addition for an Irish subtree. On a quick side note, Ireland did attempt a similar concept to the Leyland with the Dodge Mark 7 and Mark 8, with these being based on the Dodge TF-37 truck chassis though only the Mark 7 actually had any anti-tank weaponry and this was in the form of the 20mm Madsen. Only five of these were built in both variants and they served from the early 1940s till the early 1960s and don't seem to have been as successful as the Leyland design. And the Dodge Mark 7 is basically very similar to the Leyland so like I said it has the same armament, same speed, crew complement and protection. So this would probably be surplus to requirements for an Irish subtree but it could still be added as a unique premium or event vehicle, again battle rating 1.0 or 1.3, or possibly even folded with the Leyland to help bolster Irish lineups. But while the Leyland armoured cars were successful and had a long service life, it had taken from March 1934 to July 1939 to build all four vehicles, which was clearly an unacceptable rate of production. Thus, for the next armoured cars it was decided to buy some off-the-shelf vehicles, leading to Ireland ordering a number of Landsverk L180 armoured cars, which is a vehicle we have covered many, many, many times on this channel, due to its being sold to many different nations in many different configurations. 
In Ireland's case, it was armed with the 20mm Madsen cannon, capable of penetrating 32mm of armour at 500m, and two Madsen machine guns, one in a coaxial position and one in the bow, while the armour maxed out at around 15mm for the turret mantlet and 9mm for the hull. With regards to speed, it could reach a top speed of 50 miles per hour or 80 km an hour, and it had a crew of five, which included a front and rear driver, gunner, commander, and loader. Ireland would order eight of these vehicles before World War II and would go on to order a further five in 1939, but due to the outbreak of World War II, this order would be kept in Sweden and instead used by the Swedish army. And this was especially problematic because a large quantity of spare parts had been included in this order, and so maintenance would become much harder in the coming years. This also probably explains why Ireland commenced production on the Dodge Mark 7 and Mark 8, because they had to make up for the shortfall in L180s. The L180s would serve throughout World War II, and much like with the Leylands, the L180s would go on to have a long service life after the war, and again would receive many upgrades, such as new radios, Ford V8 engines, and Browning machine guns to replace the Madsen machine guns. Interestingly, unlike the Leylands, in the 1970s, two of the L180s would get a new main armament, with the 20mm Madsen cannon replaced with a 20mm Hispano Suiza taken from the now scrapped de Havilland Vampire Fighters. These 20mm cannons would have a penetration of around 25mm at 500m when firing APT shells, which is less than the 20mm Madsen cannon, but this is offset by a faster rate of fire albeit this would mean chewing through your ammo extremely quickly. As for the Ford engines, I believe they would give about the same speed as on the Leyland armoured cars, so about 45 miles per hour or 72 kilometers an hour, which is still pretty speedy if a little slower than before. When added to War Thunder, I could see the L180 being added at battle rating 1.3 just after the Leylands, while the upgraded variant could either be an event vehicle or folded with the L180s with both variants able to quickly get around the battlefield and hit enemies with hard hitting or fast firing weapons, depending on the variant used. And it would be nice to see the L180 finally added to War Thunder, especially considering how many nations used it. So unfortunately that's it for the World War II armoured cars, and while we do have some very decent vehicles here, they are only really suited for Tier 1 and are all quite similar to each other in regards to stats. But moving on to the Cold War period, we now get a whole slew of modern designs. Mostly foreign built vehicles, but there are a few domestically produced vehicles that could be introduced, with these being produced by the Timoney Company and designed by Seamus Timoney, who was an engineer who worked at Alvis in Britain, that company of course producing the Alvis, Saladin and Saracen armoured cars. The first of these domestic vehicles is the Timoney Armoured Reconnaissance Vehicle 4x4 Mark I which was fitted with the same 76mm gun as on the British Scorpion light tank, and this fires a Hess shell with 82-90mm to of penetration, and has a crew of three. Unfortunately, other stats aren't really available, though no doubt it would be a fast but lightly armoured vehicle, and according to some sources, while only two of these prototypes were built in Ireland, this vehicle apparently did go into production in Tanzania, though again, sources on this are somewhat scarce. All in all, the ARV Mark 1 would be a perfectly serviceable vehicle at around battle rating 5.3, especially since its Hess shell ignores the effects of sloping, and so it would happily fill in any tier 3 or 4 gaps in an Irish subtree. While given a massive upgrade from the previous armoured cars, and a different playstyle from the Irish tanks that would be included on the subtree. There is also the Timoney APC Mark 6, which was tested with a turret fitted with a 90mm gun essentially making this an Irish version of the Vickers Mark 11, which was also based on a Timoney APC. The 90mm weapon should perform broadly the same as on the French AML-90, so 320mm penetration with heat FS shells. It had a top speed of 65 miles per hour or 105 km an hour, but this was without the turret, so no doubt some speed would be lost, while the armour thickness would be extremely light, making it vulnerable to enemy fire. Its original crew without the turret was two, though I believe it should be around three with the turret, though ten soldiers could also be carried, allowing the crew to be bumped up as required. This seems to be a decent vehicle for around battle rating 7.0 to 7.6, giving Irish players a far harder hitting vehicle than the ARV Mark 1, 
albeit with some overlap with the AML90, which would also be available for the Irish subtree. But for players looking to use just domestically produced vehicles, this will probably be preferred to the French vehicle. Unfortunately, most Timony armoured vehicles generally weren't fitted with anti-tank weapons outside of tests and prototypes, so there are limited domestic options other than the two we just looked at. Thankfully, Ireland also used many foreign designs, giving us a wide variety of foreign vehicles that could be added to an Irish subtree. To start off this list of foreign vehicles, we have the French Panhard AML60, which started off as the AML 67 CS, which was armed with a 60mm CS mortar, but this was later changed to a 60mm HB mortar. Despite being a mortar, it could be used in the direct fire role, and the HB mortar was able to fire both heat and APFS DS rounds, with the heat round able to penetrate 200mm of armour, and the APFS DS round able to penetrate 20mm of armour at a 45 degree angle at 1000 meters, making this a surprisingly decent vehicle for anti-tank work, especially when using the heat round, though the APFS DS round may struggle a little bit. Also, as this is a mortar weapon, it does have an elevation of minus 15 to plus 80 degrees, meaning that a skilled player can use this weapon in the indirect fire roll, potentially catching some players off guard, or allowing the bombardment of choke points or enemies behind cover. Other than that, it has a pretty good top speed of 56 miles per hour or 90 kilometers an hour, a crew of three, and a maximum armor thickness of 12 millimeters. So definitely more suited to the reconnaissance and ambush role. As for the battle rating, I would suggest placing it at around battle rating 5.3 or 5.7, as its heat shell would have the same penetration as the Soviet PT-76 at 5.3, though the APFS DS round might struggle a bit, so maybe just having the heat round available could be a way around this. Like with the previous armoured cars, the AML60s would be upgraded and have experiments carried out on them over the years, with the vehicles eventually becoming the Panhard AML20, which involved the replacement of the old petrol engine with a Peugeot diesel engine, the addition of a new GI2 20mm cannon to replace the 60mm mortar, and the introduction of an upgraded fire control system, which included a laser rangefinder. Unfortunately, it would be hard to take advantage of the laser rangefinder due to the 20mm cannon's anemic performance, being only capable of penetrating around 37mm at 500m with HFAP rounds, meaning players would probably be forced to engage in flanking attacks at close range. Personally, I can't see this vehicle going any higher than 5.3, and possibly even lower, which funnily enough would also make this the lowest ranked vehicle with a laser rangefinder, as we don't see it appearing on other vehicles until rank 5 or battle rating 7.3. Potentially it could be used in conjunction with other vehicles with longer ranged guns, with the AML-20 providing ranging information for these vehicles, but I can't see this being a rewarding strategy for players using the AML-20, so I suspect hit and run attacks would be its main strength. In addition to the GI2 20mm, there were tests conducted with other weaponry, with one AML being fitted with a 25mm Bushmaster, and another fitted with the 30mm Raden cannon as used on the British Scimitar light tank. Both of these weapons have much better penetration than the regular GI2, with the APDS round on the 25mm Bushmaster and 30mm Raden cannon, capable of penetrating 74 and 95mm of armour at 500m respectively. These two variants could be added as premium or event vehicles, or potentially even have these weapons available as modifications on the regular AML-20, much like with the recently added TOG-2. These weapon choices would give even more variety to Irish vehicles, allowing players a wide choice of fast firing weapons, which could all be used on the same chassis, giving players a familiar vehicle to work with. So as you can see, there are many, many variants to choose from with regards to the AML-60 and AML-20, but for those of you looking for something with a bit more punch, there is thankfully the Panhard AML-90, which is virtually the same as the AML-60, but is fitted with a 90mm gun. And this vehicle is handily already in War Thunder in the French tech tree, However, the Irish variant was upgraded with a new diesel engine and the same fire control system as used on the AML-20, which remember gives it access to a laser rangefinder, 
which is something the original AML90 does not have access to, meaning the Irish variant would represent a massive upgrade compared to the French variant. This could result in a slightly higher battle rating from the original AML90 7.3 to maybe 7.6, but it would give Ireland a very unique variant of this vehicle to differentiate it from the original French variant. And I can see this being a very successful vehicle in an Irish subtree. So having looked at many, many Irish armoured cars, both domestic and foreign, we finally come to the Moag Piranha 3H Medium Reconnaissance Vehicle, or MRV, which is a vehicle designed by the Swiss Moag company. In Irish service, the MRV variant is armed with the 30mm ATK Bushmaster II Mark 44 cannon, which is already in-game on vehicles like the CV9030 Finn, where it has a penetration of 110mm at 500m with APFS DS rounds, but only 81mm at the same distance with its stock APDS rounds. It also comes with two 7.62mm machine guns, has a crew of three consisting of a driver, commander and gunner, though six troops can also be carried. I suspect armour protection would be roughly on par with other vehicles of this type, so proof against smaller calibre weapons at a few hundred metres distance, but extremely vulnerable to regular main battle tanks. But thankfully it also has a very high top speed of 62 miles per hour or 100 kilometers an hour, meaning this fast moving vehicle should be able to avoid most heavy enemies and quickly deal with them by attacks on their flanks, as well as still being used in the traditional reconnaissance role, allowing other more heavily armored vehicles to deal with enemies that you perhaps can't deal with. I could see this going at battle rating 9.0 or higher, and this would be the most modern of the Irish vehicles added to the game. And while it maybe does lack a little in overall hitting power compared to contemporary vehicles with large calibre weapons, I think it would still be a pretty fun vehicle to top out an Irish subtree. So that is all of the Irish armoured cars I would like to see added to War Thunder. I'd be interested in your views on which of these vehicles you'd like to see added, as well as any vehicles you think I might have missed, and I look forward to reading them comments below. So I hope you've enjoyed that episode on Irish Armoured Cars. I'm thinking the next episode might be about Swiss Cold War tanks, but we'll just have to see how that one goes. I've been doing quite a lot of research on that side of things. But like I say, hopefully you'll join me for the next episode regardless. I've been Toreno, and I'll see you next time.